Yeo Bi Yin. Yeah. Um, welcome to Penang Institute Chats. Yeo Bi Yin is the Minister of Energy, Science, Technology, Climate Change and Environment. It's a mouthful. Yeah. Now, I get um, energy, climate change and environment, but how do science and technology fit in with your portfolio? Uh, I think uh, there is always a synergy between uh, what we are going to do for the future in, in terms of climate, environment, as well as energy in, uh, in, in, in the entire thing. But I guess it's, uh, the reorganization is more than just uh, synergy because at the end of the day, we are talking about how do we streamline ministries in, uh, uh, when we have a previous government that have so many ministries and how do we streamline it. And uh, fortunately and unfortunately uh, that, uh, um, that my ministry has uh, become much bigger than uh, what it is, uh, what it was. Uh, but I think it's one of the way that we streamline it. For example, there are many, many other that, well, I think there's synergy, but also I thought that uh, it's, a, it's a streamlining process. Especially in science and technology, we have many, many agencies that should be uh, rationalized and also should be um, uh, consolidated. Uh, to make it smaller. So my thought is that uh, it is a, a good time that all come together and then we can actually make uh, consolidate some of the related and uh, redundant agencies to be uh, um, together and then streamline and small restructure and then if in the future there is a need and then you can split again the, the ministry. Right. Yeah. Um, now, our Prime Minister has announced that Malaysia is not going to use nuclear energy, yeah. thankfully. Yeah. And you also said that um, you're confident of yeah. uh, reaching 20% yeah. of renewable energy target by the year 2030 from the current 2%. Yeah. Um, at the same time, Malaysia is heavily reliant on fossil fuels. Yeah. Not only that, but a yeah. good portion of the country's income comes from petroleum. Take yeah. that away. Yeah. Um, you take away jobs, you take away money, you take away... Um, pretty much people's bread baskets. Um, what is your philosophy on achieving the aforementioned target um, without jeopardizing too much, without too many negative side effects? Because basically, we are re-energizing the whole country. Um, I, I just want to uh, clarify the target. The target is 20%. Mm -hmm. Uh, excluding large hydro because if it is including large hydro actually we are already at 21% at this moment um, so those are 20% uh, uh, renewable energy excluding large hydro and yes we are heavily reliant on uh, fossil fuel at this moment but um, not using fossil fuel is not going to jeopardize our oil and gas and I, I think there is a misunderstanding here um, that for example if you do not use gas some of our gas right now actually are sold at a lower price than what it can be sold in an LNG price if it is sold uh, in a global market that means to say that if we don't use our oil or gas actually we don't use our oil anymore to, 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 to power up our uh, our station, power station. If we don't use our gas, and we can, if we can actually sell our gas away to to international market, we are actually uh, uh, better off. The problem right now is the the the, the equation must be that um, the renewable energy that we use to generate uh, power, the per kilo hour must be that of a uh, competitive to fossil fuel. That means the people don't need to pay a lot more, and then we can sell our gas. So 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 it's not uh, mutually exclusive. Yeah, and in fact, we can actually be more, um, be more uh, richer than what we are today. Uh, but I would like to say that uh, fossil fuel, we, we are heavily reliant on fossil fuel, but half of it is actually from coal. Mm -hmm. And Malaysia do not produce enough coal, and we have very insignificant um, a reserve in coal. That means Malaysia is heavily susceptible to global coal price. Uh, that is what we are facing at this moment. So, and this will actually uh, affects how we plan, how business plan their, uh, their, 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 their business plan, uh, a lot of uncertainty because of global fuel price and uh, every six months we adjust the surcharge. So, so bringing renewable energy, renewable energy calculate cost through levelized cost of energy. That means if you build a, a, a solar power plant and you levelize through 20, 30 years and then per, buy per kilowatt hour, how much is it? That means that uh, renewable energy is so much more predictable in terms of price than, uh, than uh, fossil fuel. So this is one of, uh, another advantage of having a renewable energy. We are not talking about renewable energy in terms of only about saving the world. 
we are really talking about giving a more sustainable energy mix in Malaysia and giving a more certainty in electricity bill for Malaysians. Those are some, some of the most important things to us. Three things is of our most concern in, in terms of when we plan our electricity industry. One, affordability. Two, sustainability. Three, reliability. So, so all these three must come and we must be able to produce such a, a, a electricity industry and not just green. Green is sustainability, but sustainability is also about financial sustainability. How sustainable is, 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 is our electricity mix? So, so we have a series of uh, meetings on that, uh, many, many series of meetings, many, a lot, a lot of numbers. So uh, a lot of number crunchings, a lot of different views of experts. Uh, we are still doing that, and hopefully we will come up with a, with a plan uh, um, in, in, in a few months' time. Um, on the topic of climate change, yeah. it's reassuring to know that our government, our government is not putting its head in the sand, um, denying that climate change is fake, mm -hmm. unlike some global leaders out there, by including it in a ministry portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, how, how is your office reaching out to the public to change their mindsets? You know, because every little bit that we do, or rather we don't do, helps the environment. Um, climate change, uh, as a small country, um, uh, well, in, uh, in my book, actually, I wrote a chapter on uh, climate change, on uh, how Malaysia should be. Um, so when you look at climate change, you have to look into adaptation or mitigation. Mm -hmm. Adaptation is that, um, so, so there are consequences of climate change. And climate change, uh, global warming is happening and is continued. It will happen because uh, the world is a big mass body and uh, uh, carbon dioxide concentration will reach an equilibrium. But, but that equilibrium itself is a higher than historical, so you would have a temperature increase. Um, it's the, the extent of increase depends on what we do today. So there will be an increase. The Paris Agreement is to, is to limit the increase to two, two Celsius. So, so you will have problems uh, that comes with the lo lower than two Celsius uh, increment. So uh, for example, more extreme weather, uh, high, uh, higher sea level, but uh, Penang actually is one of the victims of higher sea levels. Uh, and then you will have uh, food uh, security problems and that uh, you have uh, other, other uh, diseases problems as well. So, so one part of the ministry is to really look into what are the impact of climate change in, in, uh, by from now until 2050 and, and how the nation should be prepared for it. Um, uh, in terms of our infrastructure, design code, etc. So that's on adaptation. And on the mitigation is how do we cut carbon dioxide emission. I just want to say that uh, Malaysia is a very, very small country. Uh, our carbon footprint in the, is insignificant. Um, so uh, no matter how much we cut our carbon dioxide emission, uh, the world is not going to be safe by us. But I always say this, I always say that uh, when there is, um, in Chinese, um, there's such, this thing called Wei Ji. Wei Ji is crisis. Way is when it's dangerous. T is when it's, there is opportunity. So how do we find opportunity as Malaysian in this crisis of the world? I would think that if we can develop uh, low carbon uh, products, uh, low carbon energy uh, solution to the world, we will be able to not only help Malaysia to mitigate, but most of our idea is to how do we play a, a, a role in the green economy? that is just going to grow because the world is facing climate change problem. So it's either we follow people or we say, hey, today we are going to grow our green technology and green industry and we want to have a, 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 a slice in the, this, this growing pie. Uh, so I, my thought about mitigation is more, more than just us cutting our carbon dioxide emission but our industry being able to export the expertise uh, in carbon dioxide emission reduction solution to the world. Yeah. Okay, thank you so okay. much for your time. All right, thank you.